Hello lovelies, in this video the brilliant Dr Edwards is going to be taking you through your microscopy practical for your GCSE biology, so how to use the equipment and then what to do with the results and measurements at the end. Microscopy required practical. First of all, let's go through the hazards of this practical. So we're going to be using stains, which we need in order to be able to see structures that we're looking at under the microscope. So, for example, iodine is the main one, especially if you're using plant cells. These are all irritant or harmful chemicals, so we must wear goggles when using these at all times. If any of these substances gets on your skin at all, you should also wash your hands straight away. Some of the equipment can be considered sharp, so we could be using a mounted needle. And the slides and cover slips are glass and they can be easily broken or have chipped corners or edges. So please make sure to check that all the glass isn't chipped or broken before you start to use it. And be very careful with putting them near the edges of the bench, for example. Make sure if you're using a mounted needle, you always point it away from you. OK, let's look at the method then for preparing the slide. We're going to go through how to prepare a slide of onion cells. But if you're using other plant tissue, this will be the same. And we'll talk about the animal cell method a bit later. So the first step is to add a drop of water using a pipette to your microscope slide. This is just going to help your tissue stick to the slide. Then you're going to need to peel a very thin layer of onion epidermal tissue. We need the layer to be very thin because we're trying to get one cell layer so we don't have multiple layers of cells and we need the light to be able to pass through it. You're going to use forceps, so not your fingers, in order to lay it flat onto the slide. This is to make sure you don't transfer any of your own skin cells onto the slide. Then you're going to add one to two drops of iodine on top of the tissue. This will give colour to the cells and it will stain structures to make them more easily visible under the microscope. Because these cells are completely transparent, so we won't be able to see anything if we didn't use stains. And then finally, you're going to lower your cover slip, which is again a small glass piece of slide, over your sample, and you're going to lower it down using a mounted needle. And this way of lowering it down means that you're being gentle, you're not touching or putting fingerprints all over the cover slip, and also it prevents us from creating any air bubbles. If you get any liquid coming out from outside of the cover slip, you can then just blot it away using a piece of tissue. Rules for biological drawings. The point of this practical is to get some slides of cells that you can see down the microscope to practice our biological drawing. So the first rule is always to use a sharp pencil. No drawing should ever be done in pen. Your lines need to be continuous lines, not wispy or sketchy. I'll show you what this means in a second. You must always use a ruler for drawing your label lines and to make sure they touch the structure that you are labeling. You should never cross over your label lines. You should not draw too small. Half an A4 page is about the right size. Unless you're given a box or area in the exam, in which case you should fill it. You always need to include the magnification that you use to view the structures that you drew onto your diagram. OK, so here you can see what I've drawn as an example of a bad diagram. Hopefully you can spot all the mistakes. First of all, I've got my wispy, not continuous lines around the edge. I've got my crossing over of my label lines. I've got my cell membrane line that's not been drawn with a ruler and it's not actually pointing or touching the cell membrane. And then I've got my, yeah, my wispy lines, as we said, around the outside. Also, I've sort of shaded, scribbled in the nucleus to make it dark, and that's not what we want to be doing. We shouldn't shade at all. We can add maybe dot work if necessary, but we shouldn't be colouring or shading. So I've redrawn that diagram to follow our rules. So I've got my continuous line around the edge, not wispy. I've got some mild dot work, but I've got my nucleus, my cytoplasm, my cell membrane, all labelled with straight lines drawn with a ruler, and they're all touching what they should be. 
I've also included my magnification. So I must have looked at this diagram using a times 10 eyepiece lens and a times 40 objective lens. I times those together to get my total magnification of times 400. So that's what I've put on my diagram. So these are my expected results. Here's what I would expect you to see down the microscope for the onion cells. And then if we did an animal cell example, we could have used cheek cells. So we do a similar method to the onion cells, but to get the tissue onto the slide, we would have to rub a cotton bud onto the inside of our cheek in order to remove a few cells. And then we would rub that onto the water, as I said, that we put on the pipette onto the microscope slide and then we would add a blue stain. So you can see on my onion cells, it's that yellow brown of iodine, which has stained cell walls and the nucleus of the cells. With my blue stain for the cheek cells, we use that because obviously there was no starch in animal cells, so the iodine wouldn't really have an effect. So we use this to be able to see the cytoplasm and the nucleus and the cell membrane of the animal cells. We only need to be able to draw what you see. And I would say that you wouldn't need to draw every single cell in this onion cell field of view. I would only draw a few. So also you can only label the structures that you can see with your light microscope. And at this magnification, all we can really see is the cell wall, potentially the cell membrane, the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Exactly the same pretty much for the cheek cells, but again, we can only see the cell membrane, the cytoplasm and the nucleus. There's no cell wall with animal cells. To get this level of detail for both slides, you'll need to focus it at least times 200 or times 400 to be able to see this and draw exactly what you can see. Make sure you're drawing the whole cells, not fragments. So there's about one, two, three, four, five, there's about six animal cells in this field of view. The rest of the other bits you can see are probably fragments of cells, chunks of stuff that's come off with the cotton bud. That bottom left cell has been folded over. So it's actually been kind of slid. When you put the cover slip down, you can press down gently, but if you were to slide the cover slip, then you would be at danger of folding over cells and then sort of wrinkling them up. And that means they're obviously less easy to see. So just make sure you're very, very gentle when you're putting the cup slip down. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches. <laughs>